Chapter 10. Monroe slid into the booth. Still no food? Where is it? He asked. I stared hard at him. Two minutes ago, he said he was going to the bathroom. A few seconds later, the cook started screaming about a monster in the kitchen. I worked up my courage, took a deep breath. Uh, Monroe? I pointed to his chin. What is that on your chin? Did you turn into a monster and grab raw hamburger meat in the kitchen? Monroe reached up and tugged the chunk off his face. He examined it. My bubble gum, he said. He laughed. I wondered where it went. He popped it into his mouth and started to chew. Was it bubble gum or raw hamburger? Three dark uniformed police officers came, officers came running into the restaurant. They raced into the kitchen with their hands on their holsters. Staring at Monroe, I thought, the monster you're looking for might be sitting right here with me. I shuddered. I instantly felt bad for having that thought. I mean, Monroe was my new friend. That was no way to think about a friend. Besides, I had no proof. I didn't know if the screaming woman was serious about seeing a monster. No one in the restaurant knew what to believe either. The kitchen doors were open wide. I saw a woman in a white apron and chef's hat. She was surrounded by people and the police listening to her talk. She waved her hands wildly in the air as she told her story. The police officers left, shaking their hand heads. The restaurant grew calm again. That was it. No proof. What if I was wrong? I decided not to tell anyone, not even Lissa, till I had de definite proof about Monroe. Our cheeseburgers finally arrived. Monroe wolfed down both of his while I was just staring at mine. Then he gobbled up two orders of fries. He asked if he could have some of my fries. He said his stomach was still growling. He finished my fries and burped so hard it knocked over his Coke. He grinned. How about dessert? No way, I said. I checked the time on my phone. I have to get back to my dad. Monroe burped again. His burps were long and raw. They sounded more like vomiting than burping. Can I come with you? Yeah, sure. I led the way through the mall to dad's pet shop. The macaw wasn't in the front window. He'd been replaced by three fuzzy gray kittens. They were rolling around having a wrestling match. A good crowd gathered to watch. I opened the door for Monroe and we stepped into the store. I waved to Dad. He was behind the front counter handling a large green bag of dog kibble to a woman. She wrapped it in her arms and walked past Monroe and me out the front of the store. This is my friend Monroe, I told Dad. Dad ducked out from behind the counter and came over to us, wiping his hands on the legs of his khakis. Monroe had his back turned. He was staring intently at a large glass cage. I saw several gerbils scrabbling around through the layer of the shredded newspaper at the bottom. Hi, Monroe, Dad said. Monroe nodded. He kept his eyes on the little brown gerbils. Dad lifted the glass lid and pulled out a gerbil. He let the gerbil climb over his hand. Too many of you little guys, he muttered. Monroe smiled at Dad. Yeah, you sure have a lot, a bunch of them, he said. They're climbing all over each other, Dad shook his head. I really should put them in a larger cage. They just multiply too fast. They're cute, Monroe said, eyeing the gerbil in Dad's hand. Dad set the gerbil down gently on the shredded newspaper on the cage bottom. One is cute, he said. Thirty? Not cute. He lowered the lid over the cage. A minor bird whistled on its perch against the wall. Murray hates it when he doesn't get all the attention, Dad said. He walked over and petted the bird's beak with one finger. The mina made a cooing sound. Hey, did you two have lunch? Dad asked. Yeah, we ate at the burger balloon, I said. Raphael will be here to take over, Dad said. Then we can go home. He turned to Monroe. Would you like a ride? Monroe tossed back his long hair. Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot. Dad motioned to the roar of the store. Bean, come to the supply room for a sec. Help me move some big seed bags. He disappeared into the back. Look around, I told Monroe. I'll be right back. No problem, he said. I turned and started to jog to the supply room. I was nearly there when I turned back and uttered a hoarse cry. A creature, a big fur-covered creature. It stood in the aisle. At first, I thought it was a gorilla, but it stood tall like a human, and I could see the long yellow fangs poking down from its black lips and its blood-red eyes, and I realized. I realized it was the monster, the same ugly monster I'd seen running to school. I froze in shock, in total horror, and I watched it lift the gerbil cage lid with a fat, furry paw. It pulled out two gerbils and raised them high. It held them by their tails. I watched them swinging together upside down in its grasp, and then 
the creature lowered the two gerbils into its open mouth and noisily chewed them up. <laughs>